started. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Allow me please to share my screen and to do some terrific thank yous. Awesome, and here we are again, welcoming us to this annual membership meeting of Puppeteers of America. We are, well, I know it's hard to kind of even know what day and time it is right now in this new reality. It is August 16th, 2020. Oh, and please know this will be available afterwards on our YouTube channel. We'll post this entire video there as well. If you miss anything, because we're gonna have to go kind of quickly, you'll be able to enjoy it then. We wanna start with more thank yous. Um, we are the board of directors and the appointed leaders of Puppeteers of America. We are serving for you and um, we are so proud to do so. Your board of directors completely volunteer service. And again, we're happy to do so. We have two volunteers to thank as they ended their term of service as board of director members this past year. Thank you to our outgoing board of directors members, Amanda Pettifish-Shrag from Ames, Iowa, the Great Plains region. Thank you also to Seth Schaefer, Austin, Texas, Southwest region for their service this past year and years before that too. It's a three-year term for Puppeteers of America. We also wanna thank our regional directors serving for 2019, 2020. And again, we know that some of these have already shifted into new leadership. We're recognizing who served for the bulk of last year. Our Great Lakes Regional Director, Rick Morse, Mid-Atlantic, Jeff Bragg, Northeast, Sharon murphy Bosky. Pacific Northwest, Annette Mateo. Pacific Southwest, Christine Pavalexis. Southwest Region, Joanne Schroeder. Great Plains Region, Stan Gulick and Callie Melvin. Southeast, Kevin Pittman. Special thank you as well to our amazing regional treasurers and to the heartbeat of our regions, our guild leadership. Thank you, thank you, thank you for serving locally, regionally, and we can't wait to see you serve nationally too someday. <laughs> we want to thank our operations and support team as well for 2019-2020. Dina Ausbach is our advertising coordinator for Puppetry Journal. Laura Borgendale is our webmaster. Ron Brunk Parker, our accountant. Jamie Don Moyer serves as the associate editor of Puppetry Journal. Georgette Forgione is our proofreader for the Puppetry Journal. Legal for Good serves as our legal consultants. Randy Shave serves as our insurance officer. Joe Tenerelli as the graphic designer for the Puppetry Journal. Our committee chairs. Archives Committee, Carly Bergman. And again, this is serving for 1920. Audiovisual Library Committee, John Bell and Seth Schaefer. The Awards Committee, Brian Hall. Budget and Finance Committee Chair, Anna Vargas. Communications, Stacey Gordon. Development, thank you to Aubrey Watkins and Joanne Schroeder. Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, Edna Bland. Endowment Fund, Monica Leo. Festivals and Subboard Committee, Justin Curtis. Local Regional Leadership Task Force, we do wanna thank John Leshner for that. Nominations Committee, Paul Robinson. Our P of A Unima Alliance, Dustin Curtis is representing P of A, and Chad Williams, we're so grateful for him as a Unima USA representative this past year. Procedures Committee, Ken Martinson, another board committee. Puppetry and Education and Therapy, Michael Vettery, and Scholarship Committee, Kat Pliviak. Those committees need you. We need members for all those committees, so do take a look at that. I'm gonna invite you to take a look now. Go on, look at those names, look at those things. Look up close, absorb it, find one that meets your needs, your skill set, your talents, and we'll take you. <laughs> We'd love to have you actively serve locally, regionally, and nationally on these committees too. Another slide share. I'll go ahead and just quickly overview a year at a glance. This certainly doesn't say all that we've been able to do um, for you, with you, because of you, but things that we looked at in this past year as project or initiative highlights and focus areas. Streamlining of committees and liaisons and adding new members, meaning we did try to really look at those committees and say which ones are actively serving, which ones can be combined, how can we make those the more effective, the most effective working bodies of our organization. We all stepped up our duties as liaisons to those committees and you'll hear us as we introduce ourselves, the board members tell you which to which committees they liaise. And finally, we're adding new members to those committees, wanting to take most advantage of you and your talents and your skills members. Uh, we did transition successfully to an administrative officer, shifting the leadership model from executive director to administrative officer. And you'll meet uh, Carly uh, in just a bit if you've not had the pleasure of doing so. 
We did take a look at some human resources tasks, um, streamlining our letters of agreement and um, finding equality within our stipend models for those appointed officers. And again, your board serves as volunteers and most of the committees and appointed officers can do so as well. We do have some that are on a stipend um, model and we did look at the equity among those. Membership communications, you might have seen that we've activated monthly and bi-monthly e-blast newsletters to, to share information. And there's always an opportunity for those or at the bottom of those e-blasts for you to tell us what you need, want, and think. Um, because communication is both ways with this organization. Puppetry Journal, we transitioned into a digital edition and successfully integrated an amazing uh, copy editor or proofreader for that uh, journal. Branding and communications refresh, concentrating logo uh, website work, continuing mission and tagline. Again, you'll hear more about these soon. Uh, social media best practices statement. We did craft those as a leadership body so that we know how best we should represent ourselves uh, for you, our members and our beloved puppeteers of America. And um, we reconnected, thank you to Chad Williams and Kurt Hunter and the entire board and leadership of Unima USA, we recommitted to communicating more effectively, more frequently, uh, collaborating on a World Puppetry Day message on equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, communications, working with them on a direct relief fund, and also just sharing social media and celebrating each other's work better that way. And of course, it was a tough year as well for many of us and still is. And um, we feel yeah, we're here as well. We did have some additional challenges that thanks to you with your support and um, your feedback, we were able to address some challenges around COVID-19 and also um, formalize a response to the George Floyd protests and um, Black Lives Matter. There you go. Um, we're now gonna hear from our amazing leadership. So that's all you're gonna hear from me right now, which is great. I might see you at the end, but I'm happy to hand it over to leadership. We're gonna share these little leadership blurbs, these that are up, up, updates in three buckets. And these three buckets are knowledge, inspiration, and preservation. Knowledge, inspiration, and preservation. We have those three buckets that are a part of our mission statement. Puppeteers of America Incorporated, supports puppeteers and advances the art of puppetry by presenting knowledge, providing inspiration, and promoting preservation. So again, we share these reports on knowledge, inspiration, and preservation. We do know that some of you may be enjoying this presentation um, in a unique way. We do want to let you know because the next presentations are going to be video only and no text. Please know that this slide deck and highlights from the following video presentations in written text form will be available after the meeting. Okay, so again, if you're enjoying this presentation, needing to have written text, no worries, we've got you. The next presentations will all be video, but we will gladly send you highlights of that for those who need it in text-based form. Um, email office at puppeteers.org to request these resources. All righty. Let's do this thing. It is my pleasure now to hand this message over to the Puppeteers of America Administrative Officer, Carly Bergman. Hey, y'all. So I'm going to give a quick report of uh, the Administrative Officer position at the, we are housed at, out of the Sabathony Community Center, which is in Minneapolis. So that's where I'm working, holding down the fort. Um, we still have our regular office hours. So we are still open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. till noon Central Standard Time. And so I'm happy to receive phone calls and answer emails during that time. I will say that due to COVID, 19, the Sabathony Community Center has decided to close on Fridays. So the best way to get a hold of me, because I don't always have access to the office phone these days, is email. And I'm happy to respond as soon as I can to those emails. Um, then moving on to, great. I also want to give you all a big thank you. We've had great success in getting checks reissued um, after the post office issues that we were having and um, the mail issues that we are having here in Minneapolis. So thank you for that. Um, and check in with me at any time if you have a question about that. I'm still happy to make that even easier for everybody. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you all, um, 
I'm serving as editor on those e-blasts that you guys are getting, those monthly newsletters. Um, that is something that we started this past year, sending out a monthly newsletter. Um, and we were happy to see that we our open rate on those has gone up by 3%, which is putting us at 41% open rate. So thank you for opening those emails because we are now 24% higher than the nonprofit industry average. <laughs> so I hope you all are enjoying those. And we're going to continue that in this next year as well. That is my big news out of the office <laughs> as your administrative officer. I'm going to pass it on next to Paul Robinson, who's going to give you your membership officer report. Take it away, Paul. Well, thanks, Carly Bergman. I appreciate you and good to see you. So I'm Paul Robinson. I'm the membership officer. And also, as you saw previously, I am also the nominations committee chairperson. Um, Membership is still going. Uh, I am no longer in Minneapolis. I am hunkered down in my 130 year old church here in Superior, Wisconsin, taking your membership dues and making sure that all of your information is kept up to speed. So want you to know a couple things of what you um, get for your membership still, your puppetry journal, um, hopefully they've arrived, of course, with the mail system and everything from uh, what's going on in our country at this time. Mail is slow, so please be patient. Um, your puppetry journal should get to you shortly. And or if you just can't wait, check on the digital puppetry journal on our Puppeteers of America website. Don't forget insurance, liability insurance is available to all members. Um, that will be coming up where you can reapply or apply uh, at the end of September through October. Also remember you get discounts on puppetry festivals um, and most of the, I would say, the puppetry festivals for the regions will be taking place this next year on top of the national festival will be coming around the corner in 2022. Um, also, through by being a member, you get um, the availability of being able to apply for scholarships and also endowment grants. Um, we'll have more information on endowment grants for this next year and or 2020, but with COVID, many, many things do change. And so we still have to have conversations about how the endowment grants are being affected through COVID. So anyway, don't worry, we'll let you know what's going on. Um, and so also there's other different uh, things that you can take advantage of through the website. Um, please go ahead and check out what is available um, when you end up opening up your profile on the web page. Now, I do want you to know that during COVID, we totally understand and um, are very sensitive to everything that's going on. Uh, and that's also within your financial stability. So as a member to P of A, if you are struggling to be able to pay for your membership, please send me an email at membership at puppeteers.org and we will um, work on to keep your membership fluid without any problems of missing puppetry journals or anything like that. But in order to keep it constant, I need to be contacted and I need to know the information so that we can keep your membership constantly going. So again, if you are having certain problems, please email me, membership at puppeteers.org. Don't worry, everything is confidential and we aim to please and make sure that you are taken care of. So if you have any questions, please go ahead, ask questions below. Otherwise, send me an email and I will then take it off and um, end up passing on to Anna Vargas, who's the chairperson of the Budget and Finance Committee. So, hey, Anna, good to see you. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for all your hard work. Okay. Um, I am Anna Vargas. I chair the Budget and Finance Committee. 
I hail from the Northeast region. And for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna give you a little brief intro. Uh, our committee um, oversees the financials of the organization. The committee membership is mandated in our bylaws to be the current president of the board, a board liaison, a past national festival director, a P of A member at large, and a chair. As chair, I receive quarterly reports from our accountant. These list our income, expenses, and investment activity. I also check the bank statements monthly. There are currently two people who can sign checks, myself and Paul Robinson, and in case of an emergency, we have two more people who could step up. A little background, which was alluded to, um, Beginning September 2013, we have had a full-time employee, an executive director. Prior to that, we had an honorarium system. We spent more money than we took in in order to establish this position. There were many benefits to having a full-time employee and a permanent office, as Paul Robinson did an excellent job. Financially, we did okay as our investments in the stock market made up for the shortfall due to low membership numbers. The downside was we did not receive the grant monies and corporate sponsorships we had hoped for. In 2019, Paul went from full-time to an honorarium position, membership officer. Carly Bergman was hired to staff the office part-time. This cut some of our expenses. After a year, I took over paying some of the bills and some banking duties. Financial circumstances have also changed. Our investments have been depleted. The last two national festivals lost money, reducing our investment principal and hence dividends. The COVID pandemic has affected us as well as our stock portfolio has gone down in value. The pandemic has also affected membership. As of June 30th, we were on track to meet our proposed 2020 budget but as of July, we're not receiving the expected income from membership and donations as people are struggling and renewing their membership has become a hardship. Traditionally, we receive more new memberships in the year that we do regional festivals. Because we had to cancel all our regionals this year, we anticipate a shortfall. As we had already expected a, a small deficit in 2020, this is very unfortunate. At present, we have proposed a similar budget for 2021. We will evaluate the proposed budget in November based on how 2020 proceeds. It is our sincere intent to have a balanced budget as we did prior to hiring a full-time employee. Our membership hovers around a thousand plus and has remained such for the last eight to 10 years. Our expenses have, however, increased. In conclusion, we can weather the short run and we will endeavor to use P of A's assets conservatively. If you have any questions, please email me at Anna D. Vargas at Gmail. I can answer all your questions to the best of my ability, but sometimes it gets get technical and this is not the place. So please write your questions down email me at Anna, A-N-N-A-D Vargas at Gmail, and I will respond. Thank you so much for your continued support. God bless you. Oh, and I want to hand it off. <laughs> the next step is to hand it off to Steve Abrams, our journal editor. Take it away, Steve. There we go. Hello, everybody. Um, so I guess it's no news that uh, Puppetry Journal is late. Uh, I have the information that it was mailed from, the printer mails it, it's not mailed from Minneapolis, it's mail mailed from uh, Columbia, Missouri, and it was mailed on July 22nd. And people are still, there are people who have not received journals yet. I heard uh, a day or two ago that a few more arrived. My first, and there's a difference between first class mail and second class mail. So first class mail should theoretically get it a few days after it was mailed. Um, a lot of those have not arrived yet. So once it's mailed, of course, it's out of our hands. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, if you have issues about it, though, you can contact me or contact the office. Like somebody said, his journal was kind of 
wrecked up and wet when he got it and we'll be happy to, you know, I'll be happy to replace that one. Uh, so we're, we're working on the next journal. Uh, hopefully that'll come out the end of September. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to serve you. I've had a lot of compliments on the last COVID issue. Uh, I was really delighted to find the image for the cover uh, done by the Images in Motion people. I have a great team that I work with. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll just keep cranking them out as best I can. Oh, should I say something about the digital journal too? So you should know that uh, all the members should know that there is now a digital version of the journal in the members uh, part of the P of A site. So you can read the journal digitally online if you don't have your print copy yet. And I don't know who's next on the agenda. <laughs> And next up is Lissa. So we'll toss it over to Lissa. Hi, everyone. My name is Lissa. Uh, I am president of the Indiana Puppetry Guild in the Great Lakes region. I tend to specialize in puppet building and prop making. This is my first term and I'm secretary for the board. Um, as such, we are looking at using some online storage for some of our handbooks and documents. Uh, I am also the Archives Committee Liaison, and we are continuing to digitize the journal. Uh, we have about 123 new ones that are searchable PDFs, and we're also evaluating those for clarity. And we are also going to be reviewing our procedures and bylaws this year. So uh, there may be some changes coming up. And with that, I'm going to toss it over to Sharon murphy Bosky to talk about uh, regions and guilds. Thank you. Um, I'm Sharon Murphy Bosky. I prefer being called Murphy since there are way too many Sharons involved in puppetry in my area, so Murphy is less confusing. Um, I am also the uh, Puppeteers of America nerd, the Northeast Regional Director. <laughs> um, let's see. And uh, I'm on the Board of Directors and um, liaison to the uh, awards committee, but I'm also on the Guilds and Regional Task Force, um, which is officially known as the Local and Le Local and Regional Leadership Task Force. John Lechner is chairman. There are representatives from every region and from many different sizes, focuses, and involvement levels of guilds. This task force exists, it's meeting, and it's learning about the similarities and differences between different guilds and regions and then thinking about what is working and what isn't so that we um, so that conversations about how to improve things can happen. Uh, and so I'm going to hand it off to Dustin. Hi, everyone. Dustin Curtis here. Uh, I'm the treasurer for Puppeteers of America, and I am uh, living here in toasty Seattle, Washington. Uh, I belong to several guilds, but my first and my home-based one is the Puppeteers of Puget Sound here in the Pacific Northwest region. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for your votes. I, I've just come in on my second and last term on the board. And in the past year, besides serving as treasurer, um, I've chaired the festivals committee and I helped cover uh, the communications committee and the web project that we'll be talking about. Uh, helped to serve and develop the development committee uh, and act as liaison between Puppeteers of America and Unima USA, as well as being the social media manager for the organization. Uh, so I, I am uh, really happy to get the extra help from our new board members this year. Um, I just wanted to give you an overview on festivals uh, and clue you in as much as we can to what's going on, because I know there's a lot of questions and uh, I think I personally still have quite a few as well. Uh, we had an exciting season lined up uh, with regional festivals in the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic combined, uh, Pacific Northwest, the Southwest, Great Plains, and the Southeast. Uh, and as all, you, uh, all of you know, we had to postpone and cancel them all. Um, I wanted to just take a moment to thank Mary Nagler and Jeff Bragg um, Sharon here on the board, Joanne Schroeder, Monica Leo, and Keith Schubert for all of their hard work in making these festivals, trying to adapt the festivals to move, and then freezing all of the work at the same time. So it's, uh, it's been challenging and everyone's done a, a really great job in doing that for our members. Um, so far, the board has been focused on being as supportive as possible to support our regions. Uh, we're trying to encourage uh, new versions of online events, 
and we're trying to set our sights on hosting some of the regionals in 2021. Uh, of course, that's uh, very dependent on the COVID situation, uh, which we all understand currently is not going so well. So there, there's a lot of questions up in the air. Um, currently, from that initiative, there's two events that have come out. Um, one being from uh, the Mid-Atlantic region, they'll be having the National Capital Puppetry Festival uh, this upcoming weekend on August 21st to the 23rd. Uh, and the Northeast region will be having an upcoming virtual event in October. Uh, this also leads me real quick just to mention that we did communicate earlier that we're looking at moving the National Festival to 2022, which is our best guess due to the difficulty in planning the event right now. Um, in the meantime, once again, we're hoping to explore having some all online alternatives that will bring us all together in community and allow us to spend time together online. Uh, the reasons we made the decision are, are pretty simple. It, it's just not possible to work on events right now with so many institutions being closed or undetermined. Uh, it also goes without saying that the safety of all of our members comes first. Uh, and there's some other financial aspects such as insurance and, and large deposits and other things that I'm not going to bore you with here um, on the, in this talk. Uh, if, you know, we'll have questions later, but you're welcome to reach out to me on, um, through the office online if you have my information. Um, you know, like Anna, some of it's very detailed and complicated, so we can't spend that time here. Uh, but I do want you to know that uh, the board and the committee together just wants to keep in mind that Puppeteers of America has a history of reinventing festivals um, from when we used to have them annually to 1987 to when we had three in a row in the 90s in our current cadence today. So we're going to keep that spirit on going and uh, we're going to move through this pandemic together and, and get things back on track. Um, uh, you know, we'll, again, we'll be happy to share the details when we have them, but just your guess is as good as mine in some areas. Uh, just one last note before uh, we move on. Um, we've been working hard to modernize and support future festivals. Um, we've worked to lower the cost of insurance for festivals by taking out a single policy um, on Puppeteers of America and allowing the festivals to cost share between that, uh, which saves several hundred dollars for each region. Um, we will also be able to provide more resource support in the upcoming year to festivals by providing web tools and resources and real estate, which will be uh, significant financial savings. Um, we're currently working on those, but we, we have the assets, so I'll be looking forward to sharing some more information down the road with you this year. Uh, now, since I mentioned all these new and upcoming things, I'd like to hand it over to Ken, and he can start us on, on sharing some exciting news with you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Ken Martinson. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, a member of the Southeast region, and I joined P of A when I was around the age 11. So I've been a member for more than 40 years, but my service to the organization is much more recent and I'm really happy to be stepping up and serving and working with this great group of people. As volunteers, uh, it's just amazing to see the passion that these board members have. Some of my work has involved, uh, I'm board liaison with the procedures, just keeping our day-to-day -day operation manual up to date. And also I enjoy working with Steve Ab Abrams as a liaison uh, on the communication side of the Puppetry Journal. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some upcoming initiatives uh, related to our branding refresh. And this is really a continuation of efforts that we began several years ago. Uh, our goal is to present P of A in the most professional manner. Uh, P of A is a leader and we want our branding and our image to represent that. Uh, some of the initiatives that we started Aretta began the presentation today with the tagline, knowledge, inspiration, preservation. And that was a new addition that helped solidify some of our working and um, our, our initiatives fall almost always into one of these buckets. Another thing we did was update the mission statement. And so the next step is going to be the look and feel. We really want to achieve a consistency of branding We've seen, uh, you've noticed it, we've had many variations of logos and images and different color schemes. And uh, we're now working on getting a consistent P of A brand look and feel. We've been working with Stephen Molinax, who is the design director at the Center for Puppetry Arts. He's helped guide us through uh, some of this process. So soon you'll be seeing there's a, a logo refresh, which it's an update. It honors the overall format that is part of our legacy with a fresh new look. Uh, the refreshed look will be coming to our email newsletters that uh, Carly is managing. 
the membership mailings that Paul is working on and most visibly on our website, which is puppeteers.org. And speaking of the website, this will be a perfect time to toss it over to Stacy, who's gonna talk more about the great improvements that will be soon launching at puppeteers.org. Hi. Um, I think at our last member meeting, if you were there a year ago at the, pu at the Puppet Festival in person, um, you probably heard me talk a lot about how I'm so excited about this new uh, membership management program and, and website that we're going to be launching. And nothing happens quickly. <laughs> so here we are a year later, and I'm so excited to say that within the next month or so we will have a new website um it will we're still going to be working on the content of the website and updating the content the url will stay exactly exactly the same it will be puppeteers.org and um but but the platform that we have it on is going to be different the really cool thing about this is that it's a we're using a member management um, platform called wild apricot right now if you have if you see in the directory in the membership directory that your address is wrong and oh darn i forgot to change my address three years ago and no wonder i haven't been getting christmas cards uh, from Paul Robinson because he doesn't know that i have a new address anymore so I need to make sure that that gets updated on the website. Well, right now you have to reach out to Paul, it has to be when he's working, he has to log in and he has to change your information. Well, using the Wild Apricot format, we're, you guys are gonna have access to changing all of that. You guys are gonna have, um, you guys are gonna have control of the information that you choose to share with the public. So you can have your own you can have your own private account information, and then if you have a different phone number that you want us to con that you want the public to contact, you can have that up there too. Um, when we switch, this is super super important, very importante, and you will get an email about this. When we switch, you will get an email asking you to log in and update your payment and your password and you're going to be asked to make a new password the reason for this is because the payment um, that you currently have on file is in encrypted and that means that we can't see it which is how it should be but that means that when we move over to this new um, platform, you'll just have to put in your, your payment um, information. It won't charge you unless your payment is due, unless your membership is due. Um, and if you are unable to pay, go ahead and contact Paul and he can work something out with you. Um, so uh, yeah, we just need all of that stuff updated on the new system you will get this is super cool you will get a membership card on your phone and we're hoping to do something with that down the road um, but covid kicked that can a little bit so um let's see oh the other cool thing that we're building on there is we are building a calendar of events and festivals that are going to be happening around the country and we can share the details of how you can share your event uh, when the closer to when the calendar is ready to launch. Um, let's see, look at my little list. Oh, uh, yes, it, it just like all of us, this website is going to be a work in progress. This is not something that we are going to set it and forget it. We are going to continually be looking at the, at the, at the website to make sure that it's updated, to make sure that it's um, that the that it's easy to use to make sure that the information is useful and accurate. So I want to assure you that we're not doing it and ignoring it. It is going to be it, it's going to be really good and it looks really good. I've seen the sandbox version, um, and it's so easy to use. That's the other really nice thing. It's very very intuitive. And I think that you guys are going to really, really like it. And Dustin, I have to thank Dustin for um, 
I've, I've, I've been working on this for a long time with a lot of people and I have to thank Dustin for kind of helping to bring it over the edge. And then also we have to thank Laura Borgendale, our webmaster, because she has been putting in so many hours um, updating this wonderful, wonderful thing. So I am going to pass this off to one of our new board members, Katie Williams. Hey guys. I'm so excited to be here. Um, like Stacy just said, I am one of the new elect board members and I'm super stoked. So my name is Katie Williams. For those of you who don't know me, I am located in Denver, Colorado. Um, I have my own puppetry company called Katie Williams Design, primarily fabrication for theaters. Um, I'm also the president of the Rocky Mountain Puppetry Guild and of the Rocky Mountain Puppet Slam. And here on the board, I'm serving as liaison for festivals and communication. So I'm just gonna give a small little update about the communications. So Stacy has been doing an amazing job with all of the communications and I'm kind of stepping in to start helping. So a couple of things we wanna to mention to you guys. Um, we have a lot of super exciting stuff with communication that's going to happen built into the website, built into all of these fun new changes we have. So kind of keep your eyes open for how that's going to go. Specifically, we wanted to talk a little bit about social media. So right now, Dustin is in charge of social media and I'm going to be assisting him as well. We are going to have a system in place very soon where you will actually be able to submit your shows and let us know what you're doing in the puppet world because we want to help promote you. So for now, we do have an email that you actually can submit shows to that maybe we're able to promote. And that email is uh, social media at puppeteers.org, social media at puppeteers.org. Like I said, we're gonna have things a little bit more solidified here in the next couple of weeks, so you can look out for that. But in the meantime, you can check there. Um, Dustin is running that right now. I'm gonna be helping him. And the other thing that we wanna say is that we would love your help. So this committee is super fun. Communications, as you can tell, is all about talking to you guys. So we would love help with that. We would love help with this very active committee. So this one is quite active, um, but if you're interested in being a part of that, just let us know. We would be happy to have you on this committee. And I think that's all I have right now. So again, thank you so much for electing me. I'm super happy to be here and serve on your board. Um, this is my first term. And with that, I am going to hand it on over to Liz, who's gonna talk about scholarships. Thank you, Katie. Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Joyce. I am on the board of directors, newly elected like Katie. My ter term ends in 2023. I serve on the board of the Puppetry Guild of Greater New York, and I have a touring company called A Couple of Puppets, and I have a not-for-profit puppet theater called Goat on a Boat. And I'm in the Mid-Atlantic uh, region at the end of Long Island. So I am on the scholarship committee as the liaison and I um, am serving on the endowment committee and I've just uh, stepped up to serve on the development committee as well. Um, as for scholarships, uh, I'd like to thank you all. We, the board, would like to thank you all um, for your support of our scholarship program, You Make It Happen. And you help us bring youth, young adult, and adult scholarships uh, for national puppetry festivals. Applications and details are available on our website and social media platforms, emails, newsletters. You can stay in touch and, and keep abreast of when scholarship opportunities arise. They usually come in uh, festival seasons for the national festivals. Um, you must be an active member to apply. Uh, scholarships differ in their awards, all cover registration fees, and some cover additional expenses too in their application requirements might be a little bit different too. Uh, we're proud to work with and have the support of the Bernie Silver Festival Scholarship to bring our um, senior members to attend festivals. The Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival Region 5, that it gives Puppeteers of America memberships for university studio, students using puppetry in their work. And the Mark Dunworth Foundation to be able to offer additional opportunities for our members. So watch the website, email, social media, and the Puppetry Journal for more information. And I'd like to turn it over to our Vice President, Alex Griffin. 
Hello everybody, um, I'm Alex U. Griffin, and I am a Los... Oh, sorry, it went wide and I couldn't see my stuff. Um, I'm a Los Angeles-based puppeteer, filmmaker, and vice president of my beloved Los Angeles Guild of Puppetry. Within the P of A, I am, as noted, vice president, and happy to be liaison to and a member of the audio-visual committee, the local and regional task force, the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, and the COVID-19 Task Force. Um, I am wearing a button-up shirt, a cap, and let's just pretend I'm wearing pants. So, first off, I'd like to talk about the audiovisual or AV library. Um, we are so very, very thankful for the time, wisdom, and effort that Professor John Bell has put into the AV library over the past number of years serving as chair of the committee um, before sharing that with our outgoing director at large, Seth Schaefer. Um, with, that at with that in mind, we are excited to welcome teacher, puppet builder, and Puppeteers podcast co-host Adam Krutinger on as the new chair. And with that, we're looking forward to expanding what we can do not only to make the AV library more easily accessible to all members, but also to look at ways in which it can be used by members to document and preserve their own content. Um, and I'm really excited about what, you know, can happen going forward. Um, and now I would like to talk about the COVID-19 task force and those efforts. Um, as many of you are probably very painfully aware, um, the changes to our world that have taken that have happened since the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so many performance artists have been and continue to be struggling to make a living like they once did. And with compassion and understanding of those struggles, especially as many of us on the various boards um, are also struggling performers and volunteering as well, we have been very excited to house here at the P of A, the COVID-19 task forces efforts to support this community. And our main effort is the Direct Relief Fund for Puppet Artists, which helps provide just the touch of financial support to P of A and Unima USA members who have lost work during the pandemic. Over the summer, the fund reached a milestone of having given over $30,000 of support. Um, with that, I'd like to send a special thanks or we would like to send a special thanks to Cheryl Henson and Heather Henson for their generous donations in starting the fund, and to the Mark Dunworth Foundation, Camilla Henneman, Dragon Con, Unima USA, and all of the individual and company contributions that have and continue to actively make a difference for those continuing to struggle. Um, you can find a full list of the generous donors at puppeteers.org slash relief. I would also like to send a special thanks to Bo Brown, Pam Severns, and Brenna Ross for helping put together the National Puppet Slam Demic, which raised funds through donations and merchandise for our relief fund. Uh, beyond the relief fund, we have our puppet artist shops where members can link to their online shops, or you can find and purchase things from members, um, you know, puppeteers supporting puppeteers. And we also have our internet puppetry events page, which allows members to both post and find upcoming online puppetry events, workshops, and productions. Both of these can be found on the P of A website. Um, and then finally, uh, I, as the P of A liaison and active member of the COVID-19 task force, would like to send a super special heartfelt thanks to our task force members, IBEX Puppetry's Jessica Simon, P of A Director at Large Dustin Curtis, P of A Membership Officer Paul Robinson, and Unima USA's Director at Large Chad Williams. Um, you have all done so much and volunteered, you know, your time to help make a difference for everybody else, potentially while still dealing with your own struggles to make it through this time. So, thank you. And, um, oh, and also a special thanks to Heather Henson and Ibex Puppetry for their continued support of this task force and the efforts. And with that, I'm going to hand this off to Clarissa to give a talk about development and talk about our upcoming initiatives. Thank you, Alex. 
My name is Clarissa Lega, and I'm sitting in Centerville, Tennessee. Uh, this is uh, my second term. Uh, I'm the only senior citizen on the board of P of A, <laughs> and uh, I have uh, been in puppetry for 38 years, uh, touring nationally with our company, Artistry and Wood and Strings Puppet Theater. Um, I have been uh, honored uh, at, in, as serving in, on P of A to be the president uh, at one point, and at two other points, I served as secretary. Uh, and it's been wonderful working with a, di a diverse uh, group of people who, who bring a lot of energy and a lot of thought and care to this board of directors. The region I represent is the Southeast region. Uh, we're very close to Nashville. And uh, we uh, also, in, in Nashville, we have uh, a, a, a local guild called the Tennessee Puppetry Guild, which meets sporadically. So um, whenever we can get together, uh, we, we have a, a great time and share ideas. Um, we, I serve as the liaison uh, for the development committee. Now the development committee uh, is responsible to keep an eye on uh, the revenue streams of the organization. Uh, this is a little different than your budget and finance. This is about how do we come up with new ideas or review old ideas about how money comes into the organization. Because as we all know, it takes a little money to be able to stay afloat. And um, since I've been on the committee since uh, 2018, and uh, what we've done uh, during the course of that uh, tenure is we have reviewed um, the value of our memberships, uh, also uh, the price of our membership fees to see if they're keeping up with the cost of uh, our, our operations. Uh, there are a couple of uh, suggestions and things on board that are still being under review, um, but uh, we're, we're checking on those to, because they haven't been refreshed in quite a few years. Um, the, we have also been uh, reviewing how to reach out to new populations. And uh, we've sent board members to represent us at uh, Dragon Con to uh, try to reach out to uh, young people who are in fields that are associated, but maybe not directly to puppetry, and may, maybe never thought of uh, uh, joining a, a group that might be interested in puppetry, but their work is very closely associated. Um, we have also, I want to say, uh, Ken Martinson uh, has contacted uh, Terry Fader, who is a very visible puppeteer in the world. Uh, we call him famous. <laughs> and. Uh, and he has been promoting P of A quite arduously. Um, there's uh, connections like that really serve, uh, help us to, became, be, to become visible in the world. Our, the to, our, our peak membership happened during the Muppet years. And that was because puppetry was very visible in those days. So we, we, we want, and, and people were very interested uh, um, in, in learning more about puppetry, and uh, it, that helped us quite a bit. So if any of you members have affiliations with people that are very visible in the puppetry world, uh, also if you have friends that are interested in puppetry somewhat, uh, uh, give them a gift of membership. Uh, that will help our, our, our standing and our numbers and our affiliations and our sense of community. Uh, another thing we're doing is looking into new kinds of membership drives. Well, who are the people that we can bring in? Uh, we're launching a very special puppetry and literacy initiative that will be addressed at libraries, youth, uh, youth librarians. Um, and we hope that, and that's going to be launched when the website opens up as well, because we're going to be offering some very special benefits to people uh, that might be interested on that level. And uh, so, as as always, uh, all all your help is greatly appreciated. Uh, questions, answers, we'll be glad to offer them to you. 
And uh, we want to thank Joanne Schroeder for chairing the development uh, committee this, this recently. And uh, we thank each and every one of you for doing everything you do for Puppeteers of America. I'm going to turn this over now to Edna Bland, brand new member. Take it away, Edna. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Edna Bland, and I live in sunny Sanford, Florida. And I am a theater arts teacher. Um, puppetry educator. I'm the only, have the only puppetry arts class in the whole state of, of Florida. Uh, and I'm also a teaching artist and arts integration specialist under my brand's lovely day arts in sock and soap puppets. I'm a brand new board member. I am so excited and honored to be on this iconic and prestigious and historic uh, uh, board and part of this organization. I represent the Southeast region. I'm a member of the uh, Central Florida Guild and participant of the South Florida Guild, and I serve um, on the Education and Therapy Committee. I'm also the chair of the Equity, Diversity, and the uh, Inclusion Committee. Uh, our board liaison is Alex Griffin, and I would like to give a special thanks to our former liaison, Amanda Peepfish uh, Schrag. Uh, the diversity and include the equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, was formerly called a task force and is now uh, a formal committee of Puppeteers of America. It was recently renamed the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee. EDI is comprised of 10 amazing members from um, a diverse background representing LGBTQ, Latinx, African American, Native American and special needs puppeteers. Our mission is to research, develop, and recommend best practices for welcoming, promoting, and advancing the full and equal participation of all members of the Pup Puppeteers of America. If you have any questions about cultural appropriateness or anything that has to do with diversity, please email Carly or our liaison, Alex Griffin, where they will forward the questions to our committee and we will answer and get back to you as soon as we can. Um, I have a special announcement. There will be next Saturday at this time a social justice symposium, um, which is August 22nd, starting at 3 p.m. that will feature puppeteers of color and special guest speakers of color. Um, and we will also be honoring the legendary Bruce Cannon, who was recently in the Puppetry Journal. So please check the Puppeteers of America Facebook page for details on that information. I want you all to have a wonderful evening and I'm gonna give it back to our fearless leader, Aretta. Thank you. Well, hello everyone, it's me again, right? How lucky are we? How lucky are we, this amazing community of puppeteers, this amazing community of puppeteers of America to have this group of humans who said yes to service, who stepped up to share their talents, their time, their energy, to serve our beloved puppeteers of America. I'm gonna go ahead right now too, um, as we transition into this final moment, is to, um, to kind of uh, loop on the back of what um, the amazing Edna Bland um, shared. We just wanna go ahead and, and share this. We did say, share this um, statement in social media um, and we shared it, uh, it'll uh, gonna be in the uh, puppetry journal as well. A, a statement of solidarity. So just would love to um, everyone to take a moment, if you don't mind, to take a moment to um, follow along with me um, and read along. And if you're not able to see this, no worries, you can listen. Puppeteers of America stands in solidarity with African American communities in our home base of Minneapolis, across the country, and across the world in the fight against the profound injustices of systemic racism. We believe that Black Lives Matter, and it is the right of every person to live in a world that is safe, fair, and just. We have always believed in the possibility of a better future, but we can do better, and we will work to do better. We will strive to make sure that every person is included in our mission of knowledge, inspiration, and preservation in the puppetry arts. We will strive to make sure that every person has a home with and is part of the puppetry community that is the P of A. 
you'll hear a lot more about this in the year ahead. And we thank Edna and the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee for helping us stand responsible and accountable for those words and the actions that will follow. Um, okay. <laughs> we are in our final moments here. Want to go ahead right now and um, we'll toss it over to Carly to see if there were anything she's been great about um, in being paying attention to that chat and in the questions and I think things are answered, but we'll see if Carly has anything that she would like to share commonalities within those questions uh, that she can kind of synthesize for all of us. A reminder too that lots of information can be found on our website at www.puppeteers.org and the office email office at puppeteers.org is always a really good way to reach us. Carly is so good and um, certainly I know we've shared some email addresses for the board and our leadership in the chat, but no worries. Carly is also very good about getting messages where they need to be. So I'll real quick toss it over to Carly to see if there were any questions or commonalities um, that she would like to share. Great, so um, I do have one question for the board that was submitted by one of our members. Um, our member wrote, what can members do right now to support P of A and each other during this pandemic? And I know that you guys have gone over um, our COVID-19 initiatives that we have already taken, um, and, but uh, the part of the question supporting P of A and each other during this pandemic, I just wanted to bring it to you one more time. And certainly any board member is um, able to jump in and share what they uh, would like to share, but I'm gonna say you've already done it by showing up today. <laughs> it doesn't mean that those who aren't here aren't passionate or awesome human beings, but by tuning in, by touching base, by getting to know P of A and our mission and our operations and our initiatives and programs better, then you know if there's something that you can uniquely provide. So you've already done it by showing up today. I would also recommend being in touch with your local puppetry guild if you're fortunate enough to have one. Um, and if not, that's cool. The way you can get involved is by those committees. We do need help on those committees. They are the working bodies of Puppeteers of America. So those committees do need um, help. So number one, you showed up and you already done a thing. Thank you. And number two, uh, take a look at those committees. Or, uh, Number two is a uh, local guild, and number three, take a look at those committees. Any other board members? I'll go uh, silent. For those of you that know me, that's a thing. I will go silent for a moment and see um, if anyone else has some comments as well. I have found that being online with um, our puppetry community during this time has been so beneficial, and even P of A as the BOD um, getting together and talking and, and connecting is such a good way, and you, you don't have to you could just do it with your local guild or your favorite puppeteers, but staying connected and sharing ideas. And uh, I feel like we probably have more people here today than we might have had at a, at a national festival, um, that the online community is very inclusive. And it, it's, it's not the same as being in person, but it is a nice way to be connected. So. Um, and this is Alex Griffin, for those of you just listening. And uh, I saw in the chat, Nancy Riggs said, like and share each other's stuff on social media. And I just wanted to like and share that message as well, because it is very important. And, and going to a show, and it, it, if there is a suggested donation and you can afford to make a donation, if you're in that position, to do so, because we're not able to go out and perform. We're not able to do the jobs that we normally would do. And so everybody's trying to find new avenues and, yeah, as much support as we can give to each other. And don't be afraid to host or attend an online puppetry event. I know we get kind of Zoom burnout, but it's also so great to see friends. And tapping into what both Liz and Alex have just said about social media. So the importance of that like or share or comment, the algorithm of Facebook and other platforms, the more likes, the more it is going to repopulate throughout the channel. And we don't want to only just support other puppeteers. We want to expand the audience. So the more that you can share it among your friendship circles, that's the way that we expand the piece of pie to more people. And I have seen some of the puppet slams and I have been thoroughly entertained 
and keep up the great work, those of you who are creating this content. It is some good stuff. Um, hi, Edna Bland, back again. Um, my suggestion is be a mentor. Um, be a mentor to um, uh, children, to youth, be a mentor to each other, um, be a member to a person <laughs> of color. Um, uh, it's so important. I know during this time, um, it's so easy for us to kind of get into our own selves and be to ourselves. But, you know, when we reach out and we help other people, it really does help us also. And you never know what connections that you might uh, gain by just connecting with others. And it'll just make you feel better. So that's my recommendation. Terrific. How do we do, Carly? You're doing great. Um, I have two questions that came in that are similar that I'm going to pitch to the board. I'm going to try to wrap them into one. Um, so we have a couple of members who are wondering um, how they can connect with other puppeteers virtually who are P of A um, because they don't know anybody near them who are puppeteers. And then the second question tied into this is, how do we find committees near us? So maybe we can answer a question between the difference between committees and guilds, but also talk about connecting with puppeteers um, near you. Awesome, and if it's okay, I may toss it over to Paul about the membership connecting with members in the area. Is that an okay question to toss over to you since you have an overview of? Sure, why not? Why so, not? <laughs> what you can do is by connecting to other members, there is the membership directory on the website. I know Stacy has said that we will be changing over websites. We'll have a membership directory on the new one as well. And it'll be much easier for you to be able to find all of your neighbors in your own town, in your own state, in your own region. So anyway, but in the meantime, you can go on to the P of A website right now, log into your profile. Down on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll be able to click into membership directory. There you can, there's a drop-down menu that you can click on for your region. Hopefully you'll know your region. Um, otherwise, you can also look on a map which is in the regions and guilds area of the um, P of A website about and information. So anyway, um, go ahead, you can find all of those people there. On top of, you can also within your region, check out the guild page, which also has that map. So anyway, those are ways to be able to find out, or you can just throw something out, say, hey, I'm living in Superior, Wisconsin, and who's close to me? And then, hey, friends will end up also with your Facebook post or your Twitter or also Instagram, and they will probably come back to you saying, hi, I'm here, let's get together. So those are ways of being able to do it. Um, and this is Alex Griffin, and I, I just wanted to follow up real quick that if you are using the website right now, the information is definitely not the most accurate. Um, and with our, our um, upcoming, you know, the new website that we're putting together, we're trying to make sure that information is much more accurate. So if there is a, a president or, or somebody that you cannot easily find based on the information there, just do a search for that guild on Facebook or just on Google, and that can help lead you to that or hopefully to somebody in that place. Um, but our new website will have much more updated information. Awesome, and then to piggyback on the question about committees, um, the good news about going virtual is that those committees, you can be from anywhere to take advantage of community ser of committee service. So send a note to office at puppeteers.org. Again, that's our awesome Carly Bergman, administrative officer, with um, skills or talents or committee on which you're interested to serve, and she'll hook you up. She'll connect you with uh, those of us who are liaisons for those committees and will be able to say yes and take advantage of your service in the best possible um, respectful way. <laughs> we are, uh, thank you, we're, we're uh, just about a couple of minutes before we do want to wrap up. Uh, Ms. Carley, how are we doing? Any other questions, any other comments that we should answer? I haven't received any other questions or comments at this time, so I think we're right on time.
Perfect. Friends, this session will be posted on the Puppeteers of America YouTube page. So if it inspired you, please share with a member who is not able to be here today. Let them know that. We will share that information uh, via email and on social media as well to let folks know that um, the information is available. This meeting is available uh, to get all that great information. In the meantime, it is our pleasure to serve. We serve at your pleasure. We serve because you have been kind enough to allow us to do so. So as a volunteer board, thank you. <laughs> we wouldn't do this without you. We wouldn't do this unless you were out there uh, connecting with us and telling us what you need from our Puppeteers of America. So everyone, thank you for joining us for the annual membership meeting of Puppeteers of America. Again, it's August 16th, 2020. My name is Aretta Baumgartner coming from the Center for Puppetry Arts in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks again to the Center and to Sara, our Digital Learning Director, for helping us host this session. Um, be well, everybody, and we can't wait to see you, whether it's here in cyberspace for now or at an upcoming festival or meeting, local, regional, guild, we cannot wait to be together again. So again, on behalf of the Board of Puppeteers of America, the appointed leaders and all of the terrific team that we have, thank you so much and thank you for your membership. Have a great evening, everyone.